my own. They'd still be like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, obviously, I've been doing my own thing. You know, they've had a couple things come up. Let's try to get through this one step at a time. Hey, did you do that thing today? Then look over the lady, Captain, over there. You never seen it? She just oh, then you didn't do it. Yeah, right no, the basket is sitting on his desk along with a dozen cupcakes. Okay. Go back and take um, a leak. Is he coming back? How many cupcakes? He wants to know whose desk he's going to get the cupcakes. <laughs> there was no door to go to the same. All right, good evening, everybody. If you could silence your phones or turn them off, we're going to begin in about uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, today is April 4th, 2022. Today is a committee of the whole meeting for City of Barberton uh, Council. Before we begin the committee of the whole, we are going to jump into our committee meetings for this evening. And we will start with streets, sidewalk, and lighting with Mrs. Angela. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to call the order of the streets, sidewalk, and lighting committee. It is April 4th, 6 p.m., and we're in council chambers. Members of the committee, which I'm chair, uh, Mrs. Bailey, and Mr. Griffin are present along with council members and other guests as noted on my sheet. Topics of discussion, uh, request legislation, we have none. We have no pending. Miscellaneous discussion, I did talk to our service director, I'm sorry, I emailed our service director today and was asking him about the um, street paving program and they're finalizing that. Um, the list and as soon as they get that list that will be uh, it'll go over to GPD our consultants and then it will go out to bid so they are working on the list any questions from any members of the committee no from the body no from the audience no no no? no, I had a question. I have a house rental there on Orchard. Mm -hmm. The one from Worcester up going up to Orchard. It's really bad. That street was really bad. Is that in Orange? Orchard? Yeah. Orchard Street? Yeah, my house is a 555 Orchard. Okay. That's not on my, that's not in my ward, so I'm not quite sure if that's on the list or not. Yeah, um, together, I'm sure it is. We've got several lists. You know, yeah. <coughs> Based on budget, there's a main list and then there's an alternate list. Uh -huh. um, sometimes there's a second alternate list. So if you get through the main list and there's money left over, they can choose some alternate list. It is really bad. Yeah, that one way is uh, one way goes down. One way I'm up there in that summit in that. Anything else from the body? No? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. This is Bailey, do I have a second? A uh, second motion. Mr. Shorter, and we are adjourned at 6.02 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Angeloff. Next up is Environmental Health and Social Services with Mrs. Bailey. Thank you, Mr. President. I call to order the Committee of the Environmental Health and Social Services. Um, today is April 4th. It is 6.02 p.m. We are in council chambers. All committee members are present, which is myself, uh, Mr. Jaber, and Ms. Angel Mrs. Angeloff. Um, all other council members are present as well, and all others are as noted on my sheet. Um, there is no new requested legislation, and there is no pending legislation either. Um, any miscellaneous discussion? No? Chair? Mm -hmm. Um Do you have any feedback about <coughs> or any updates with the mosquito abatement program when that's going to start up this the, year so the meeting this month which is next thursday should be more up to speed of what is going to go on this year every every meeting up until now has kind of been like maintenance meetings um so this should be more informative because we're getting into the season so i'll have a report on that next time awesome thank you mm -hmm. 
to you. I have a motion motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Okay. Second that meal. Okay. We are adjourned at six oh four PM. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. <coughs> Next up is planning, annexation, and codes with Mrs. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. I call to order the planning, annexation, and codes meeting. It is Monday, April 4th, 6.04 p.m. here in Council Chambers. All members of the committee are present, which is myself as chair, Mrs. Angeloff, Mr. Jaber, and Mr. Greer. All other council members are present as well, and any guests noted on my sheet. I have no new requests for legislation. For pending legis legislation, we have the title Zoning Map Amendment 105 West State Street, an ordinance authorizing the rezoning of 105 West State Street, parcel number 01.16769 from RS40 Single Family Detached to C3 Community Center Commercial. Are there any remarks about this piece of legislation? From the body and the gallery. Okay, hearing none. Oh, Mrs. Angela. Um, this will be going three readings because it's the zoning. Correct. Okay. <coughs> hearing no other remarks, uh, moving on to miscellaneous discussion. Uh, do I have any remarks from the committee, mm -mm. from the body, or the gallery? Okay, hearing none, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Mrs. Angelo, thank you. And I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Greer. We are adjourned at 6.05. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. <coughs> Last but not least, finance and personnel with Mr. Heideck. Thank you, Mr. President. Finance and personnel, today is April 4th, 2022. It is 606 here in council chambers the committee is present which includes councilors coburn thompson president greer and myself as chairperson all others are noted tonight we have a couple of requests for legislation the first is a letter from director flaker requesting legislation to transfer one million dollars from the operation and maintenance budget to the personal service budget within the american rescue plan grant fund emergency wording and one reading is requested uh, director, do you care to share some insight? Yes. Thank yeah. you. So there's two pieces of legislation uh, in front of council that you request. One's a million dollars and the other one's 8.7 million. So one thing, so with the ARPA fund, there were, when the first ruling came out, there was something in it called revenue loss, where you could calculate your revenue loss. Uh, you basically take prior years, calculate what your loss was during COVID, and you could collect that as revenue loss. Well, they then came out with a final ruling and just said, hey, you can do this calculation or you can make it easy on yourself and you can just claim $10 million in revenue loss. And when I'm talking about revenue loss, it basically can be used for any general governmental service that the city provides to its citizens. So when I originally did that calculation, and if I took that out for four years because you could claim revenue loss for four years, um, it was gonna be very close to the 10 million. Uh, actually, how enterprise funds bounced back we might have not even hit the 10 million. So I elected for the city just to take the flat $10 million. So one of those things that revenue loss can be used for is um, it could be used for wages, it can be used for roads, like I said, general governmental services, any of that sort. So I've been speaking with an auditor and one of the things that we're presenting to council right now, and this is the first step of many, is we're gonna be using 9.7 of that revenue loss to basically reimburse the general fund for wages. However, we're also going to come to council to restrict those funds so they can only be used for specific purposes because we don't want them to be used for wages. We want them to be used for various improvements through Barberton um, 
And, and one of the problems that we're going to start running into, and we're already experiencing it, is being able to complete this stuff in the timeline of ARPA. Because so many, there's so much supply chain issues right now, being able to possibly even get some of these projects started by 2024, there could be a problem there. And that's one of the things in the ARPA guidance saying you have to have the funds obligated by 2024. What happens if we want to do a road project and it comes and they can't get to it until 25? We could have a problem there of obligating these funds. So reimbursing the general fund and then restricting them in the general fund, it lifts all the ARPA restrictions. So it would lift the, the timeliness. So if we didn't have a project that didn't start until 25 or 26, we wouldn't have a problem there. It also re removes some of the restrictions of ARPA. Um, in one of the parts of ARPA, I have to follow what's called uniform guidance. And I'm just going to use this as an example because we were going through it when we were purchasing the new ambulance. The first ambulance we wanted to purchase was $260,000. Well, being it's over $250,000, and, and even though we were going through state bid on this, so state bid, they got quotes from everywhere over the state, whoever wanted to supply this, that's not sufficient. For, for uniform guidance. You have to officially put a request for proposal out there so you could use the state bid as one of your prices, but then you would have to still get two other quotes. So to me, that's kind of repetitive, and especially when time is of the essence on some of these things, I think it's very important that we don't, as long as we're following the proper procurement methods outlined by ORC, um, sometimes, we need to purchase the stuff quickly. And to put out a bid for, like I said, for an ambulance, for example, well, a month time span could be the difference of getting that ambulance in a year and not getting the ambulance at all or two, three years down the road. So, I mean, a lot of this has to deal with the timeliness of being able to do these projects when we want to um, and not have those restrictions from uniform guidance but still follow all the procurement processes of ORC, outlined by ORC. Any questions? <laughs> yes. Chair, can I answer? By all means. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. The, this $1 million transfer from the operation and maintenance budget, is that the from the 1.5 that was allocated in the annual budget? Correct. And so we're gonna leave 500,000 of the ARP money in that? Well, it's actually gonna be a little bit less because we also have that reduction uh, that just you guys just passed last council meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's down to about like 50,000 in okay. operations and maintenance of the ARPA. Are there any <laughs> other questions for the director? Yeah, I got one. Mr. Risley? You don't want to put the restrictions on until later at some other point. We don't know what the restrictions are. I will not move the money until council puts the restrictions in place. Okay, well then why are we going in one meeting on this? No one else in the city, other than 20 people here, know about this. They're about to move $9 million of the city's money. I'm not no moving any money. I'm moving the you're, money within the fund. You're asking them to, and you're asking them to do it without any restrictions. So again, why are we doing this on one reading? Why are we doing this in an emergency to begin with? If, if I wasn't here tonight, I wouldn't know anything about this. I'm not moving any funds to the general fund right now. What this is just moving appropriations from operations and maintenance and capital to the personal service line items of the ARPA fund. What, it's not moving any what funds out of the ARPA. What keeps you from doing anything with the new fund that you're putting the money into? I'm not moving anything I until... I that. I said, what keeps you? I don't care what you actually said you're doing. What keeps you from being able to do that? Is there anything that keeps you from being able to do that? My ethics. Okay. All right. I will not do anything without council's approval. And what happens if you get fired two weeks from now? Or if you decide that you're going to take a job in Akron or Summit County two weeks from now? Then we're Ever. stuck with Ms. someone that can have... Mr. Risley? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Director Miller's not here. Uh, Director Flaker cannot be fired by anybody but the people. He is, is an elected position. That's not my point. We're 
Director Flaker can leave in two weeks if he wants to. If he says, I quit and I'm going to Summit County, then I have $9 million in a move and there's no discretionary audit and I don't have his ethics anymore. So why Where are, are you getting $9 million? Million from? He said personally. This, all, all this is $1 million. Councilor Cope. Councilor Coburn. And $8 million. Uh, when he said the nine million, he was referring to a combination of both pieces of request. Which is how much money? The nine million. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next. One. In the com in the combination There's of the no two requests. We're going to one reading and not letting any of the other citizens know about this. Especially <coughs> if you're doing it unrestricted. I understand that he's got his ethics. I have my ethics. If he leaves, there's nothing there ethically to keep. And him another up. thing that's keeping me from doing it is we don't have the money in the okay, fund. You said the only thing that's keeping you from doing it is your ethics. Well, well Mr. 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 Risley, if I may, I'm the as chair here. Uh, Director Flaker, when is the money expected to come to Barbara Denton? The second tranche of money doesn't come until the end of May, towards the end of May. Okay, so there, even if, let's say in Mr. Risley's example, that if you were to leave in two weeks, there's no money to move anyway. No, we do not have enough money in the ARPA fund to do that right now. So then, baby, what would you have, or Mr. Heidegg, what would you have to do to, re to put that money back in the original fund then? There is no money. I'm, I'm you pass this legislation right now. On an emergency these, these are, appropri these are appropriations, to, Mr. Risley. There's not actual cash. Okay, this. he decides to leave, and in, and in mm -hmm. May, what are you going to do with that money if it's approved? Then you have to move it. If, direct, if Director Flaker were to leave in two weeks, then as chairman, I would bring it right back to say we're pulling the appropriation back or rescind this ordinance if passed. So if it's not coming until May, why wouldn't we go through readings? Can anybody Mr. Give Mr. A Mr. Mr. Flaker, you requested one. I'm just trying to get everything in place because I know Definitely the other coming. pieces of legislation for this will be coming. Mm -hmm. Are your questions answered, Mr. Risley? Yeah, they're answered, but there's no reason for this to go to one reading. None. Thank you. Chair. Mr. President. Um, this is going into the personal service budget, which does have restrictions on it. What are those restrictions? I mean, personal service can only be used for wages and the associated benefits of wages. Uh, so you could have health care, uh, life insurance, uh, Medicare, OPERS, uh, so your pensions. You could have workers' comp, severance, all that makes up personal services. So just to clarify, this can't be used on streets, vehicles? No. Just because? Yeah. Are there any other questions? So the, all the restrictions in the place this you place haven't been hand. recognized, sir. Let's, you have to raise your hand. Mr. Risley? I guess him nodding his head is him not recognizing me, but that's okay, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Coburn. So my question is, is this. If you're going to move all that money into exactly. a fund and it's restricted for basic payroll needs, we're going to put $9 million into there? Or are you going to move it after that? What we're going to do is, I'm just asking them to switch around appropriations right now. Correct. And I'm trying to figure out then, why you're doing then that. Then we're going to go and present to council the restrictions for it. For it. After that passes is when we'll take and reclassify, well not reclassify, reimburse the general fund and restrict those, those monies at that time. I will not have money sitting free out there to do whatever with. I want this money to be used for the city of Barberton in the what is outlined in our ARPA. I want it to benefit the city and not just for wages. Mr. Mayor, I see your hand up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, I, so the other things that Mr. Uh, Flaker is doing is you know, we adhere to the criteria under ARPA put out by the U.S. Treasury very closely. So if the money's not there, there's no money to, to move after it's been appropriated to those line items, which has restrictions as you brought up, Mr. President. There's, as Mr. Flaker said, there's a lot of pieces, a lot of steps, right? And this is one of the first steps. So as we talked before, we don't want a thousand pieces of legislation. We group some things together. We're talking more about projects or purchases. Mm -hmm. This is similar. There's a lot of steps. Can we start the ball rolling now? Because I don't want to get to 2026 and say, oh, here, federal government, here's some of your money back. We were unable to spend it all. One of my goals is not to give any money back. So to follow through with this process, we need to take these steps. And sometimes um, there are going to be steps like this, and there's multiple steps after that. 
but we adhere to the, the audit guidelines. We adhere to all the final guidelines put out by the U.S. Treasury, and just the normal accounting principles of moving funds and allocating funds through appropriations through city council. So. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Hearing none, do I have a motion to call for this? I'll make that motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. The second piece of legislation is once again from Director Flaker requesting legislation to transfer eight million seven hundred forty three thousand and three dollars from the capital budget to the personal service budget within the american rescue plan grant fund emergency wording and one reading is requested are there any questions uh director went over kind of both of these at the same time <coughs> seeing none do i have a motion to call for this i'll make that motion Thank I'll you. I'll second. Thank you. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on, we have pending legislation, Ordinance 38 2022, Title Appropriation Building Maintenance Fund, an ordinance appropriating 65000 from the unappropriate item of the general fund to the building maintenance fund to address the leak in the roof above council chambers and the planning department and declaring an emergency. We've had one reading. Uh, Mayor, Director Shreve, do we have any updates on any estimates? So I'm going to go ahead and defer to uh, Mike here. He's actually been working with the uh, firms on the roof and the AC units. Um, so he'll, he'll explain what he's working on. By all means. Thank you for your patience on the, the costs for the roof repairs. And looking into the roof repairs, leaks are a little bit trickier than just a leaking roof. They can come in from the parapet, they can come in through the heating systems. So as we're evaluating what system to put down, we, we took a good close look at those other items that could leak also. What we don't want to do is quickly put a new roof on and find out the 1980 HVAC systems that still works thanks to a building maintenance crew that keeps it running for 42 years, but it's at the end of its useful life also and it has multiple penetrations that 40 years ago they didn't seal up as well as they do today. So we're evaluating if we should update those, how we should update those, should we bring in a more cost efficient HVAC system, seal the holes and put a less expensive roof down and use our money spent better to save money on the roof and update something a little more energy efficient. So as the those costs are being analyzed. We're, we're trying to build a better picture of what that cost should be, which we want to better represent coming back to council at that point in time. We also did some testing on the roof to find out the insulation. The insulation is one of those supply demand items that's hard to get to with certain types. Um, some of the results are starting to lead to this is a better situation for the insulation based on the roof system we have. So I got a good piece of news there uh, late last week. So as we're trying to get all the information together, we're not there yet, but we're, we're close. And even if we do get bids coming in, I, we're still evaluating whether we need, even based on the equipment, the insulation has a lag time. We, we might come to council with a quicker project that would extend you know, kind of ba put a band-aid on the roof for a real low cost until the materials come in to fix the roof properly. So I'll come back with an update on all of these items here, hopefully next week or the week after. Any questions? Counselor? I just, thank you. I just wanted to know if you think that the price will change when you get, when all the evaluation is done or 65,000 should cover the, um, I, I don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's hard to say. It's no building. The, the one thing I want to caution is the age of the roof. Yeah. I think probably 10 years ago warranted a new roof. So I think that cost might have only evaluated one roof. Mm -hmm. All of the roof systems are the same age. The insulation is the same age. The HVA system, system is the same age on all of it. 
So again, I'm trying to get all of our facts for all the different various routes on which ones we need it and which ones should be upgraded. So, any Thank other questions? Uh, I do, sir. Uh, between yourself, Director Shreve, and Mayor Judge, uh, given that that's the path you're taking, can I ask, uh, without beating around the bush here, why should we keep this request going then? I'm okay to pull a request and come back with a better cost analysis and better story here in, in another uh, week or two when we resubmit. Mr. Mayor, are you okay with that? Yeah, I mean, we'd love to be able to keep this in there and just, you know, like last minute if we needed to amend it, but uh, we hope to have something in a week or two. Can't promise anything. Um, so it might be best to pull that and then resubmit um, as soon as we have those final numbers. Well, I'm okay. I'm don't know about the committee, but I'm okay with keeping it in here and amending it if the numbers come in quicker mm -hmm. uh, rather yeah. than pull it and... I have to start is, over. Is this coming up? Set two. Um, this, this, this would be the second be reading next week. Okay. So, you get four so weeks. we'd have about three weeks, four, four weeks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four weeks till the third reading? Yeah. yeah. So... If, if at that point um, we don't have what's needed... We'll just pull it. it. We'll pull it. Mm -hmm. But if you want to keep it in there for now, like I said, uh, if the committee's in agreement, I'd prefer to keep it just in case because okay. we already know what we're looking at. Yep. If we have to amend the number, I think that's okay. Mr. President? Chair, um, thanks, Chair. I would rather, so we're talking about pulling this n the next, next if, week if, if we don't by have the, information. If by the third reading. Well, I would it. rather not amend a large amount of money on a third reading just out of the blue. That, that's where I come from. I would rather see it come through the, the process again for the public uh, procedure of it than amend on the third reading that day to update the amount. If it's a lot over. If it's, a lot, if over. it's yeah. a lot over 65,000, Because yeah. that kind of negates the process of even doing the whole three readings if we're just going to make that big jump on the third reading. Well, I'm in, I'm in agreement with you, Mr. Mr. President. If it's something that jumps to 350,000, mm -hmm. it's one thing. But I think that if You're they find that it goes from 65 to 98, that's why I'd like to see those numbers first before we make any sure. decisions to pull. Does the committee agree with that sentiment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Body agree with that? Mm -hmm. no, that I, we're in agreement as well. Um, you know, if those numbers come back and it's not that big of an increase, or an increase at all, keep it in there. No, um, but if it's a large jump, then yeah, let, let's pull it. Um, but anything that we provide will be like item, and so we'll know exactly what. Uh, but you know, this is a 70 some year old building. That's not surprising. Should, we shouldn't be surprised at what we find. But <laughs> we are. But well, as he stated, if it's if it ends up having to be a Band-Aid for now because of supply chains and the Band-Aid comes in at 77 before the major project, that's why I prefer to keep it until the, basically the zero hour there. So. Mm -hmm. right. Well, moving on then, we have Ordinance 41-2022, create new fund, one Ohio fund, an ordinance authorizing the Director of Finance to create a new fund, the one Ohio fund, and declaring an emergency. This had to do with the Giant Eagle settlement, settlement mm -hmm. if I'm mis not mistaken. Yes. Are there any questions there? Okay. Moving on, Ordinance 45 2022, title Enter into Contract Summit County, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a five year contract with Summit County for the renewal of the Matrix Persecutor Case Management System contract in the amount of $81,600 or 16320 a year. Are there any questions here? Okay. Next is Ordinance 46 2022, Title Settlement Agreement. An ordinance requesting retroactive approval legislation to enter into a settlement agreement with Giant Eagle Pharmacy and declaring an emergency. Are there any questions there? This, Counselor? This, this say, um, got a late notification of a signature date so we had to do an emergency so that it will be retroactive in time for the settlement thank you counselor then next is ordinance 47 2022 
Title Rescinding Ordinance 32-2022, an ordinance rescinding ordinance number 32-2022 titled Appropriation American Rescue and Declaring an Emergency. Were there any questions on this? Moving on, ordinance number 48-2022, title Non-Bargaining Personnel Policy, an ordinance amending number 173-2017, to achieve parity with the bargaining units for personal days and holidays and declaring an emergency. Are there any questions on that? Chair, how Ms. many Resident? meetings is that going? Um, Councilor Coburn, I was not here last week. What, just I, I think they asked for one reading. We just, just yeah, my notes, I don't have it in my notes. Yeah, I'll get together. Thank you. And moving into miscellaneous discussion, I'm going to start off with one of the pending ordinance number 45 2022, the contract with Summit County. Uh, Mr. Mayor, on my agenda sheet, it does not have emergency wording. Is that correct? For for the matrix for the uh, matrix persecutor case management system contract. I have not had a chance to talk to yeah. Was it right? I, I was absent last week, so was it called for with an emergency and just not on my agenda? Uh, it was called for how it was written, I believe. What are you asking? It was 45 emergency. I don't there think there was no we, emergency request. To yeah, yeah, she was here last she, week. She she explained it and she didn't say anything about it. Yeah, emergency. she didn't say anything about emergency wording. Well, I will ask Director Miller uh, next week. And then on the legislative session, we can amend it on the floor if she requests it. Is that okay with the committee and the body? Yeah. We can also look and see, pass legislation when this contract started, since this is a three-year contract. Um, so if it was June or July or something, then three readings are not emergency, mm -hmm. you'd be fine. But I know that there's everything that's passed through council, then there's paperwork or signatures and things that have to be done on the backside. So. Right. Well, I will consult with Director Miller there. Do I have any miscellaneous discussion from the committee? From the body? From the gallery? Seeing none, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. And we are adjourned at 631. Thank you, Mr. Heideck. That concludes our committee meetings for this evening. We're going to take a short five-minute break, and we'll come back and begin the committee of the whole. Yeah. I don't. She, I don't. She didn't. She's being. I'm pretty sure she's. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure before. Before it has to be amended on the floor. Right. It's not in the it's not in the draft. And it doesn't have a reading request on it either. Nope. Okay. I will get a hold of her. I was gonna call you today. My wife is only if it's new. If it was already been called before one time, red. No idea Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I said, I said, well, go put to this one. I ain't never been to it, so that's normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I go put for two. I go, you've never been to that one. So it's just a lot worse than this. Mm -hmm. And then I told them, you know what, look at the weapons. They're looking for the itty bitty bottles of liquor. You can hide one of them. And she started laughing. Go, and they know how to find it. I go, so believe me, I've been served for it. Yeah, yeah. They weren't. Yeah.
I'll give it a play too. Yeah, professional. Yeah, the guys announcing every movie. Yeah, the dog. We're gonna give her the dog. Get a dog. No dog. Okay. Nah, that one. Nah, that one. Well, you have to get home down like me. Got artificial hips. Okay, I set up while I'm over 75. So whatever. Yeah, yeah. They took me separate. So I have to go over 75. 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 Put me in that line where all other people are going. Anyway, I go here and they check me different. Um, and then after that, I go a little separate. I still got to unload everything, you know. And for me, put it all, I put my left foot in Atlanta. All of my uh, machine, I left the machine, I left the reservoir. It's too fast for me. Mm. Oh, I think that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing that did help me. Well, I was obviously in the We were the last plane by the big midnight Saturday night. So the only people in there were the ones in the first plane. There weren't a million people in there. Oh, okay. You know, so it wasn't like over the Oh, my God. Yeah, it was on the floor. So that helped me. So loud. Yeah. 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 That's like when people walk around with their speaker phone on, talking on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, no. 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 I don't know. Isn't that what they say? Something they do, and then we got new, like, there we go. Look at that. I'm like freaking out. Well, we're already in the air, so it matters. Yeah, that looks like a little slime. Uh huh. At that point, we're already in the air. Well, then you're not even out. I took pictures of it. You can take pictures of it. I like to look out. I like to look out. I like to look out. And I took pictures. They really come out good. See, I, I said, you had the camera. And the she, she, she sat the window and I sat next to her because I was too nervous. And yeah, most of it was at night. You might have seen it. And then when we landed in Vegas, I stripped it from the other side so I couldn't really see it. Down. But I have a night time early to take it. I tried to look out the window because when you got about the clouds, you know, you had a very nice time. Every time they move, I mean, they were nice. I flew somewhere for like twenty some dollars going southwest before, like twenty three dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, it would have been forty something. Crazy. It was new. It was for some here. I was just making sure everything was good. Yeah, they're, they're good too. I get it. All right, we're going to begin in about 30 seconds. Again, ensure your cell phones are on silent or off. And council members, just make sure that your mics are on.
I guess. My job is very easy. All right, good evening, everybody. Today is April 4th, 2022. This is a committee of the whole meeting for the Barberton City Council. I call this meeting to order at 6.38 p.m. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. We, <clears throat> before we get started, we're going to present the resolution to Chief Persley. Resolution number 39-2022, commendation, Chief Rob Persley. A resolution by the Council of the City of Barberton commending Chief Rob Persley for his 30, year, 30 years of leadership and service to the City of Barberton and the Barberton Fire Department. Whereas Rob Persley was hired as a firefighter paramedic on February 1st, 1992, he worked his way through the ranks as he was promoted to Lieutenant on May 28, 1992, Captain on June 10th of 2013, and he became Chief of Fire on April 30th, 2020. And whereas Chief Persley belonged to numerous professional and community boards and in his personal personnel file is full of countless city and state awards, he was also a member of the Summit County Technical Rescue Operations Team for more than 22 years and from 2002 to 2015 a member of the Ohio Task Force 1 OHTF-1 while serving on one of the federal urban search and rescue teams in the United States. He held several positions, including rescue specialist, rescue squad officer, and technical information specialist. And whereas Chief Persley holds an associate of applied science, fire science degree, bachelor of science, fire and safety engineering technology degree, master of public administration degree, and an impressive PhD in public policy and administration. And whereas Chief Persley enjoys woodworking, photography, and stained glass projects, he has gifted many of his woodworking creations for the community auctions. And whereas after retiring, Chief Persley plans on being active in the Safety Forces Support Center in Akron, as well as Assist 77, serving as a peer debriefer. He is also looking forward to continuing his podcast, Mentors on Fire, which is focused on mentoring in the safety forces. And whereas Chief Persley is happily married to Erica Persley, and the two of them look forward to traveling after he retires, retired, March 31st, 2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Barberton, State of Ohio, Section 1, that the Council of the City of Barberton hereby honors and gives public recognition to Chief Rob Persley for his 30 years of dedicated service to the Barberton Fire Department. Section 2, that this resolution shall be in full force and effect from, from and after the earliest period allowed by, all, by law, passed by unanimous vote on March 28, 2022. Mr. Chief, would you like to say a few words? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, I, I need to thank my, uh, my, my family, who's uh, 
without them standing behind me all these years, um, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Um, next, I'd like to thank uh, the community for giving me the honor to, to serve them for 30 years. Um, and I, saying it was an honor is an understatement. I, I've enjoyed every minute um, and have a lot of, a lot of wonderful memories. Um, and finally, I you know thank the Barber and Fire Department because uh, you know they're extended family. Um, so uh, before I get too choked up, I am uh, I'm going to end with that and again say thank you to each and every one of you as well. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Is there uh, anybody from council that wants to say anything? I will just say thank you again, mm -hmm. Chief. It's been awesome to see you uh, in that position and everything you've done and uh, the knowledge that you've passed passed on to the, the up and coming. So, Is there anybody else that would like to say anything? Uh, Mayor? Yeah, I'd just like to thank Chief Worsley for all of his years of dedicated service to the, the community here and congratulate you on your retirement. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. Chief? Well-deserved. All right. <coughs> Congrats. Enjoy. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Chief. We're going to move on with citizens addressing council. Mrs. Angel, if there was nothing else up there. All right. We have one request uh, to address council and that is the river of life assembly of god if you can step up to the podium please state your name and address of the organization and the topic that you'll be speaking on my name is Reverend diane richmond and i'm the pastor at river of life assembly of god um, just for clarification there are two river of lives in the city of barberton and uh, we are the assembly of god so uh, we're um at 133 Fifth Street in Barberton. Uh, about four years ago, we purchased that building, um, renovated it. Uh, prior to that, we were in the city of Green for a number of years, right by the East Liberty Cemetery. Uh, unfortunately, that is the building that they have painted purple recently, and so <laughs> we are not <laughs> responsible for that. <laughs> um, but we wanted to come here tonight just to introduce ourselves to the community, uh, we're new in the community. I am not new. I grew up in Coventry Township, and so uh, Barberton's always been my stomping ground. But I um, just we're just here uh, to let you know that we're here to serve in any way that we can, uh, that we're excited about being here, and we want to see everything that we can do to help improve our community. That's why we're here. I'm going to introduce Tracy. Um, short, uh, Siafi, she is our outreach director, and she's got. She talks longer than I do, so prepare yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it brief. <laughs> so, just to piggyback, kind of on what she was saying, we realize there's a lot of really great programs already in Barberton, so we don't at all want to try to compete or anything with the programs existing. We're a very small church, so we're just looking for some opportunities to be able to maybe fill some gaps that aren't currently being filled. Um, I can make all kinds of plans, but until I know the community, I don't really truly know what the needs are. So that's why I wanted to be here this evening and just get a better feel for what the needs of the community are. So um, we're happy to help in any way that we can. We do have a Easter egg extravaganza next Sunday for the community. Um, currently we run a food pantry. We are in the process of actually bringing in from the food bank a mobile truck once a month that will sit in our parking lot and have the ability to feed 100 to 150 and so we'll do that we're going to try to do that once a month it's for a six month stretch um, so that would be in the if you don't know where the building is it's right behind the Dreyer building um, so that would be that parking lot area there we also have hot meals on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings and the fifth Wednesday of every month is a community meal where there's 
no church service. It's just a time to get to know people in the community without that pressure of us trying to preach to them. So. Yeah. That was directed at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hard for me to get that concept through to her. She's not preaching. <laughs> so it, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to committee reports. We're going to start off with street sidewalk and lighting with Mrs. Angela. Thank you, Mr. President. I am uh, my committee, which I'm chair of, Street Sidewalk and Lighting, met this evening. And we have nothing new to report. And with that, I pass. Thank you, Mrs. Angeloff. Next up is Mrs. Thompson, Planning, Annexation, and Codes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, planning, Annexation, and Codes also met this evening. And I also have nothing new to report. So with that, I pass. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, up next is City Utilities with Mrs. Coburn. Thank you, Mr. President. City Utilities met last week. Uh, we had one request for legislation. It was a letter from Denny, Dennis Weaver, Utilities Director, regarding requesting an ordinance authorizing the Director of Finance to place a lien with the Summit County Auditor for unpaid utility services. This will include accounts more than 60 days past due and will include charges through August 26, 2020. We had emergency wording on that so we can have it prepared for the Summit County taxes. Um, we have an ordinance uh, number 40 that we'll be voting on next week to enter into contract with Tim Lally Chevrolet for um, a for the purchase of a new 2021 silver auto 550 dump truck and declaring that an emergency um, with that i pass thank you mrs coburn public welfare and safety mrs fry thank you mr president public welfare and safety met last monday march 20 28 2022 all members of the committee were present as well as all council members with the exception of mr heidick he was not here um, and other guests as noted we had one new no we had two new requests for legislation the first was a letter from Rob Persley the fire chief requesting a resolution to recognize and congratulate Captain Richard Swenning for his 33 years of dedicated service to the city of Arvidon we also had a letter from our law director Mrs. Lisa Okolish Miller requesting legislation to retain the regulations and prohibitions on the discharge, ignition, and exploding of fireworks that existed prior to the enactment of the amended substitute House Bill 172, and emergency wording was requested. Um, we, we had one piece of legislation on the agenda last week, which we passed, which was Chief Persley's resolution. And with that, public welfare and safety will pass. Thank you, Mrs. Fry. Rules, marketing, and development. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Rules, marketing, and development has nothing to report. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Environmental Health and Social Services, Mrs. Bailey. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the Environmental Health and Social Services Committee met tonight. All committee members were present. There is no new um, and there's no new topics of discussion, legislation, uh, requested or pending. So with that, I pass. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. City Properties, Park and Recreation with Mr. Jaber. Thank you, Mr. President. City Properties and Park and Recreation met March 28, 2022 at 6 p.m. Members of the President were myself and Mrs. Fry. Thomas Heidi was absent. Uh, council members were present. We have one request for legislation, a letter from Todd Shreves, Service Director requesting legislation to enter contract with Tim Lally Chevrolet in the amount of $52,185.82 for the purchase of a new 2023 Chevy Silverado 3500 dump truck. This truck is priced at GM Fleet State of Ohio pricing and was the lowest available price from three dealers. Emergency wording was requested. And that passed. And we had no other miscellaneous discussion. And with that, I pass, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jaber. Finance and personnel, Mr. Haddock. Thank you, Mr. President. Finance personnel met two times to call for legislation. The first 
I would like to thank Councilor Coburn for taking my place in my absence. The requested legislation is a letter from Director Miller requesting retroactive approval legislation to enter into a settlement agreement with Giant Eagle. The second was a letter from Director Miller requesting legislation to rescind Ordinance 32-2022. The third, a letter from Director Miller requesting legislation to authorize the mayor to enter a five-year contract with Summit County for renewal of the Matrix Prosecutor Case Management System contract in the amount of $81,600. The fourth, a letter from Director Doherty requesting emergency legislation to achieve parity between non-bargaining and bargaining unit members regarding holidays and personal days. Then tonight we had a request from Director Flaker requesting legislation to transfer one million from the operations and maintenance budget to the personnel service budget within the American Rescue Plan grant fund. And the final was a letter from Director Flaker requesting legislation to transfer $8,743,003 from the capital budget to the personal service budget with, <coughs> excuse me, within the American Rescue Plan grant fund. And with that, I pass. Thank you, Mr. Heideck. That concludes our committee reports. We're going to change this up just a little bit, and we're going to start off with remarks from council. Is there any uh, anything that council would like to say? Mrs. Fry? Um, I uh, wanted to make an announcement about trash service because I was having an issue in my ward with one particular home, and they weren't picking up the recycle. So we got that straightened out, or we thought we did, and I told her that she could call me any time that it wasn't picked up. So it went about three weeks, and then she called me and said they did not pick up my recycle. So I called Kimball, and um, I took the option for residential trash service, and I got to speak with someone. And Kimball has GPS, so they know when they have stopped, even the time, and what happened during their stop. Um, and she told me that the recycle was not picked up because it had hazardous waste in it. And I said, well, how could you tell if the lid was down? And she said, well, sometimes they do go to check inside the containers to make sure there isn't any waste. So I called, um, and they said that they tagged them. So I called the resident back, and I told her that why it wasn't picked up, and she was walking out to her tote as we spoke, and she said there were boxes that were sticking out of her recycle, and they were for fluorescent bulbs, and that is why they, it was not picked up. And the other thing is, they weren't her trash. Somebody else had put them into her tote, but hers did not get picked up. So she proceeded to tell me that there was indeed a tag on her tote. So I just wanted to make the announcement, because I didn't know that they did that, that when you get a call that their trash has not been picked up, if it's, especially if it's the recycle, ask them to go out and tell you whether or not they had, it had been tagged. And the person at Kimball also told me that they would not even reschedule to pick up the recycle until the hazardous waste was taken out. So I had the homeowner take it out and then they came back to pick it up. And I just wanted everybody to know that because I didn't know that <laughs> until I had that incident. And with that, I pass. Thank you, Mr. Fry. Is there any other council yeah. members? Mr. Griffin? Oh, where does the hazardous waste go then? In the regular garbage, trash, or what, what happens? Do you have to take it to a hazard? Well, mm -hmm. it, it probably should go to uh, reworks or mm -hmm. whatever, okay. like if it's paint cans or right. things of that nature, light bulbs, batteries, those should probably go to re reworks. Well, paint think. cans, they'll take if you leave them, leave the lid off and it dries. Right, right. You can dispose of that. But anyway, I learned something, so I thought I would pass it along. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Is there anything else from Council? Um, I have a few things. June 9th through the 12th is the city, city's annual citywide yard sale. And April 9th, this is from the Parks and Rec. They're having a magic egg hunt from 10 to noon at 1716th Street Northwest, and the check-in's going to be at the War Memorial. Uh, I have nothing else. Mayor? Yep. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first, thank you, ladies, for coming tonight. Um, 
I think what you'll find in this community is that if you ask for help, people are going to help you. Um, so the, the problem sometimes is you have to turn help, help away because there's Everyone's trying to do well. as much as they can. Um, That's a good problem. To have. That is a good problem. To have. Um, but there's a lot of programs and projects that we have uh, on an annual basis here in town. Um, so definitely, I'll, I'll be in touch okay. and we can get you guys involved exactly. in. So. Thank you. so thank you for what you do. Thank you. Uh, next, Jeremy, you're not leaving in two weeks, are you? Just want to make sure. No. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Not leaving. A I understand Mr. Risley's point. Um, but I want to make sure. All right. Uh, speaking with Secretary of State LaRose, Ohio's primary election will be on May 3rd, so no change in that date. Um, today, voter registration was the deadline. Uh, tomorrow, April 5th, is the first day of early voting. What's going to be on the ballot? No. <laughs> That's, a, <laughs> That's a question mark. Who? Yeah. Who? Mm -hmm. Or who, yes. Um, Councilman Heidek had asked me uh, in the not so recent past about police cruisers. Uh, we currently are waiting on four new cruisers, two from last year and two from this year. We had to order in Jan early January for this year for 22's prices. Looking at hire, uh, purchasing two more uh, this year, but the 23 list has not come out, state bid pricing list has not come out. Uh, when I put the order in in January, uh, the, the dealer said that the sheriff's department had put some in in October and they were delivered in December. But there was no time frame on us, on us getting ours from January. And we still haven't gotten ours from 2021. So that's kind of still up in the air. So I wanted to give you an update on where we are with that. Uh, in terms of ARPA funds, um, not only is supply chain creating an issue uh, for everyone, but also engineering firms, construction companies, etc., are also turning work away. Uh, we had a, a, went out for a quote. We asked four engineering firms for a quote. Two responded that they're too busy to provide a quote. Um, so we knew that this would happen. There's, everyone's got money, uh, cities, communities, counties, states, um, and everything has to be engineered, uh, most things. And then you got the construction phase. So there's only so many engineering firms and so many construction firms. And there's a deadline to make, to have the money earmarked, and a deadline to spend the money Yet, the 1st of April was the, the official date of the final rules going into place. So that time frame kind of shrunk because we got the money uh, last spring, or the half of the money last spring. So um, you know, we'll give you every update that we can. Um, I, I don't want to get into the position of, like I said earlier, of giving money back. I want to make sure that this money gets put to good use and into the community and we don't give a dime back to the federal government. Um, last week, we uh, cut a ribbon uh, for Metro RTA. Uh, they unveiled two new elect all electric buses. Uh, was able to take a ride on the buses, just as quiet as a vehicle, as a car. Um, they can go for 150 miles. Uh, it takes about four hours total to charge. Uh, they do have two, two buses, two charging stations, so they can charge one bus with two stations. So kind of make it a little quicker. Uh, so totally green uh, also has some conveniences you've seen on other buses where they have a bike rack up front so they have that but also phone chargers inside uh, with the seats so you can charge your phone they really want to uh, we've been meeting with them for quite a while on making busing different people thinking differently about busing it's just not for people who don't have vehicles it's for actually you know getting from point a to point b in a, in a great manner and not taking half the day to get from here to the northern part of the county so They've taken that all into consideration, so um, those buses are, are pretty nice. And so they're looking at two, two to three other ones in the near future here. Uh, a lot about homelessness here in the, the recent, uh, recently, um, and I saw some posts on Facebook where people are saying, "Just can't the city just get some shelter for these people?" Well, that's it's not that easy. Um, in some cases, maybe most cases. There's an underlying factor with people who are homeless. You know, it could be mental health issues, could be substance abuse, could be a lot of other issues. So we do work with Continuum of Care and other agencies to provide help. Our fire department and police department are always out there um, talking to people who are homeless or may appear to be homeless um, and working with them. They're human beings. We treat them in, in such a way, um, morally and ethically, and we're trying to get them help. But it's just not as easy as just throwing them in a house uh, with a roof. Um, and some of the people that we are aware of 
have had shelter in the past um, given to them, and that's not a choice that they, they want to stay with. So just want to throw that out there because it's just not as simple as you know, just giving them shelter. So, um, But that's a, a problem that you know, we're going to continue to tackle and, and work with these agencies on. And then finally, Change for Change is Friday, April 22nd at Block 7, and that's benefiting victim assistance. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mayor. That concludes the Committee of the Whole meeting. This meeting is adjourned at 7.04 p.m. Thank <laughs> you.